So we have 52 horsepower. Look how nice I've been framed. Oh my God. Dude, we don't even know if this engine runs. In the last episode of this hovercraft, we bought it, we got it running again, and we took it for a rip. It did not perform as well as I was hoping for. In fact, from the factory, they were notoriously underpowered. So after 41 years, we are gonna double the horsepower of this hovercraft and we're gonna take it for a rip. So how are we gonna double the horsepower? right here in these two boxes. So let's open these things up and see what we got. Man, I can't wait to see what's in this box. Oh, packing paper. Right. Whoa, Bombardier. That is a Rotax 503. 48 horsepower. 48? Yeah, we got the single carb. It says 110 on there. <laughs> I'm gonna say 110. It's written right there, John. There we go, bud. Look at that. Oh, it's like Christmas. You want a drink? Sure, man. What do you got? Not really a got, Sam Adams guy. Got some Sam Adams. There's nothing in it. <laughs> Bugger. Carburetor. Two carburetors. Cool. I thought it was the single carb. I got a duel here. Cool. So we have 52 horsepower. Man. Look at that tip. Nice. Need a little straightening out, but uh. Yeah, that's all right. Man, this this is a. Uh, this is. This is kind of nice. So uh, we are going to have to modify this exhaust system to fit our craft. Hopefully it's not gonna to be too much of a problem. So we got our Rotax 503 unboxed and it looks good. It was pulled from a known running snowmobile. Uh, now, why did we use the Rotax 503 and not something else like a 670 twin that we already have? Well, we talked to Gary at the Hovercraft Depot and he told us that in the really high horsepower motors, they cause the fan to cavitate. So the 503 is a very popular option for these scat hovercrafts because of their power to weight ratio, the wide parts availability because they made them forever and they're relatively cheap. For example, the Rotax 503 weighs right at 70 pounds and makes 50 horsepower, giving it a power to weight ratio of 0.72 horsepower per pound. A Predator 212, for example, makes only 0.18 horsepower per pound. So this is about four times more energy dense or horsepower dense than a Predator 212. We went for the pull start only, again, because weight is a big factor on these hovercrafts. So it should be easy, right? Don't say that, dude. All right, let's get started. We were told this should be a pretty easy swap. That being said, we don't know what it'd be easy compared to. <laughs> Part surgery, probably. A 670 swap. Yeah. Because 670, we had, we would have to put a radiator on it, coolant. Uh, It'd be very else? heavy. It's, it's huge. Be heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I've been framed. We're and down. And you are gonna end up on a mini bike. Yes. Or a go kart. Oh my god. A little heavy, huh? This is heavy. Oh boy. This is real heavy. I'm gonna need a hand. Should we rebuild it out of aluminum? Weight reduction, bro. Look at all the... Yeah, it's a lot of steel there. Yeah. Oh God. This thing's gonna be so heavy when we put that one on there. I know. I'm telling you, bro. Aluminum. Oh my God. Eighty-five. Wowza. That's not too bad. Why is it? It's just awkward, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's 185. Maybe it went all the way around. So we are getting close to pulling this engine off of here. Uh, loosening the belt tension too. Uh, 
There's like six bolts holding this engine on. Ooh, we should probably measure the distance this pulley has off of this so we can get it the same. Sweet. There's they, our new go kart engine. They've been separated. That'll be cool on a go kart or mini bike. So we have to pull the pulley off of this uh, engine and uh, we're gonna need a puller. It doesn't look too bad. I think I think I can do it. I'm a little worried about the bolt head. Yeah. Because I don't have this thing quite centered. Ah. Try it again. All right. I'm worried about it. Try it again. Duh. You hear the elbow pop? I did. Hey. Hey. hey, hey. One little. Dink. My man. Dink. All right. Look at that. Hey, buddy. And the crankshaft end looks the same. By eyeball. Is it the same? I think it's the same. Sweet. We can just weld it on. That's fine. Weld it on. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So we're done with this engine. We're going to go put it in a pile and save it for a future project. Yeah. Yeah. Ultra light. So our new twice as powerful snowmobile engine is installed in the hovercraft and I just got to quickly point out how cool it is how this whole assembly just bolts into the hovercraft. So you have these points here, one, two, three, four, then you have two down here at the, at the back, five, on six, one on each side. And that's pretty much it, it just bolts up to the hole. Yeah, it looks pretty good. The fuel tank might fit, it might not. No. Oh man. No. Like, if we were to remove this piece, what is that? Would fit. That is the oil injection. Oh, do we need to hook that up? Uh, I'm not. Okay. So I'm really happy how this turned out. It's almost like it was meant to be on this craft. Uh, next thing we're gonna have to mess with is wiring and uh, figure out the exhaust on this thing. That's gonna be a pretty interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, but I, I can't wait to. Uh, Take this thing for a rip. I'm just looking at it and I know that this thing's gonna do awesome. So here's how the factory exhaust wants to fit. Uh, the factory snowmobile. It's factory snowmobile exhaust, thank you. Our buddy Gary over at the snowmobile depot, hovercraft depot, says we need to cut the exhaust and rotate it and weld it back. Will it hurt the performance? Yes, probably a little bit, but apparently the setup still works very well on a hovercraft. If you cut it, and rotate it and weld it back perfectly, it shouldn't hurt the performance at all. Well, perfect is my middle name, so let's do it. All right. So what I'm working on now is the wiring on this, this hovercraft. This thing has come with tons of wires. I've got just as many on the other side of the craft as right here. All of that, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can eliminate because it goes to the instrument cluster and lights and stuff, and we're not gonna have any of that on this uh, craft. But I do need to eliminate a lot of this wiring, we've got an ignition switch right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do away with 
because we have a kill switch up there on the uh, by the, the steering on this craft. Uh, so I'm going to just start uh, simplifying the the uh, wiring. That way it'll clean it up real nice and uh, we're not going to be tripping over any wires or wires getting sucked up in the fan. Boy, that would be a heck of a thing to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this and uh, hopefully here in a minute we'll be able to hear this thing fire up. Now that I got all the wiring taken care of, we are going to move on to the exhaust, which is over here on the table. So we took out a section of this pipe and we cut it almost perfect. So I got to weld this together and then we'll be able to make a couple of brackets right here on this craft and the exhaust is going to be shooting out the back. This is what we're getting so far, guys. This, this is what we cut out which it, it turns this pipe basically like that. When we cut this section out, we got a nicer, straighter shot, and John is going to try to fit it and see uh, how it looks. That the more you remove from an expansion chamber, the more horsepower you gain. I like your thinking, sir. That's not true, though, is it? I read it on a forum from 2006. It's got to be true. Man, we, we took out like four inches that ought to gain four horsepower. That's it. Oh, Not bad. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna aim. It's gonna go down. Okay. So the, we'll move the box and and uh, we'll put it in a better spot. That's all right. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. How's it looking, bud? We're getting there. We're gonna have a little bit of a lump there at the end, but it's all right. No one's gonna know. See what I mean? Yeah. I'm just riding the wave in. Dude, it'll be all right. Let's try fitting it and see what happens. Sounds good. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Getting close. Getting real close. So uh, next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out some brackets to put right along here to hang the exhaust from. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking like like a uh, somewhat half horseshoe type of bracket. Like a big old car exhaust clamp. Kinda. Sorta. Of. Keeping yeah. it away from the uh, hull of the yeah. hovercraft. Somewhere right around here? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That'll look good. That, that looks good. Sweet. I like that. So John's working on the exhaust. Uh, I won't. I won't call it a hanger. It's like our bracket. It's what the exhaust is going to sit on. Yeah. So there's a nice little stand. One more. throw some uh, paint on the bottom of that so yeah. so when we put it on the hull it'll be restored when water goes underneath it it won't really rust so bad yeah yeah right around come on back come on back come on. right around there uh come towards you a little bit hold it well you know what it's not bad what about there yeah that's not bad that'll work and now that uh Oh wow, yeah, you missed a whole, like, half of ah, the... Ah, sorry. <laughs> Just point it out. We're to gonna everybody. have to restore it now. I gotta say, buddy, this new engine looks like it was meant to be in this thing. Oh, God. So we mixed up a gallon of gas, 50 to 1, and we're gonna test it. Don't fail us now. Dude, we don't even know if this engine runs. Decides to run away. You gotta be ready. It's gonna take my wallet with me. There you go. 
for a brake lever there is none there's nothing yeah so the only way you steer is steer from the back yeah and then off the throttle to stop. but if you're moving too fast just be prepared because you could probably go over the handlebars if right. you come out I'm of it i'm gonna try fast. to baby this thing as much okay as I can. all right i just want to say that die another day was one of my favorite movies growing up and they had a sweet hovercraft scene in it yeah so this is a this is kind of a big deal for a me, big right? moment for you this is big. all right 
So let's crank up this sweet 503 engine. Are right, you ready, sir? Yeah. Here we go. I can see how that is exceptionally dangerous. Yeah. And also kind of a ton of fun. Dude, this thing is a blast. Yeah. I was kind of thinking I would hate it like an Argo. Uh-huh. Because it's kind of a you know similar like obscure vehicle. Yeah. It's kind of a ton of fun. Wow, it's we're trying about to catch to start on fire. fire, yeah. We are about to start a fire. That'll be alright. It'll be alright. I mean it's like Don't burn fiberglass. Yeah. If, uh, There's a lot packed back there. Yeah, so we gotta keep an eye on the on the leaves oh, and that's stuff. Literally on fire. Literally? I mean, it was timbers. Oh, okay. All right, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. Just call me Piss. I can't do the British. I can do. Oh, it's all right. Piss. That's cool, man. This is great. This is really fun. So now. I, I think we got to figure out what we're gonna do. We got to do something with what this. What are we gonna do with it? I know. We doubled the horsepower output out of the uh, of the Scat hovercraft. We've gone from 27 to like 52 horsepower. <laughs> Twin cylinder, 503. Do we restore it? Do we road trip it? Do we modify it? Do we race it against something? I don't know. Let us know down in the comments. This has been a lot of fun. Leave a thumbs up and be sure you're checking out our Facebook page. We're starting to post some cars and cameras clips on the Facebook page. So be sure you follow us there. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. So we blew up the motor. What you gonna do? Tune in next week. Ike, is that your biggest fan? Sorry, I had to.